Welcome back to Farron Friends Friday. I'm Karen Waltek, the horticulturist for the Beatrix Farron Garden Association in Hyde Park, New York. Our garden is located on the grounds of the FDR National Historic Site, and also on the grounds here is an incredibly fascinating garden called the Roosevelt Small Space Gardening Exhibit. We were here a few months ago, earlier this year, with the horticulturist volunteer Al Rubens, who gave us a tour of all the different fascinating systems that he has invented or uh, outfitted into this wonderful small space. So I would highly suggest, if you haven't already seen that video, to go back a few episodes and check out the earlier tour so you can see the systems without all of the mature plants to really get an, an idea of how they work. But let's join him and National Park Service horticulturist Anna de Cordova for a tour of what has matured and come into season this year in the Roosevelt Small Space Gardening Exhibit. Hi, I'm Al Rubens, part of the whole horticultural team at um, FDR, and welcome back to the um, Roosevelt Small Space Garden Exhibit. It's September 3rd, and we are into full harvest at this point in time. And all the produce from all of the fields here go to the Duchess Outreach Fresh Farm Market. Last time um, you visited with us, the strawberries we had just basically inoculated and got them started, and now they're well under production with red okra and with peanuts and calendula and nasturtium. So we harvest, we harvest twice a week, and it goes to the um, Duchess Outreach, uh, the fresh market. And there's red okra. Right behind the straw bales are vertical planter, which is great for small spaces, patios, decks, balconies. It's just chock full of beautiful plants. Uh, we focused on some real culinary treats. We have dill, lavender, lemon verbena, basil, strawberries, mint, thyme, oregano, and lots of beautiful golden beets. And towering over my head, our tomatillos are just exploding out of their giant crib. So lots of um, delicious and beautiful treats. And new for 2020 is we added a grain garden to the small space exhibit. Um, this is larger scale, but we want to kind of um, highlight and, and showcase grains. Um, and the grains that we have here are uh, quinoa in the foreground the sorghum behind it. Um, behind the sorghum, which you can't really see, are oats. And then the, um, the colorful in the back is, is a red amaranth and a Chinese golden amaranth. Um, and then we come around to sweet corn. This is um, butter and sugar sweet corn. Um, the quinoa, the sorghum, and the amaranth are all in the amaranth family. And we kind of highlighted those because they have the highest protein content of any of the grains. So this is a small section, but with this section, it produces a tremendous amount of grain and that would be ground into flour. And a lot of times they take the amaranth flowers and they add it to wheat flour to, to, um, to improve the protein content. So they put it in your pancake mixes and your baking mixes to improve the protein. This is our African Keyhole Compost Garden. And this uh, design is really about accessibility and efficiency. So in the center, there's a wire mesh cylinder that is our compost bin that we can cover. And this little nook gives you access to an elevated garden bed. Uh, put anything you want in here. This one's in a sort of stage of transition where we have uh, the old sunflower stems with our fall planted peas starting to climb up the, well, they don't know they're climbing up the stem, but they are, they're climbing up. Um, nasturtiums that have been kicking along all summer. I think there are some fava beans, fava beans. coming up in yep. here. So this is sort of a, a garden that we've transitioned from a lot of uh, spring crops to now we're going into the late season crops. And the idea of this is one easy access um, high volume of plants in a small area, but by composting right into the bin, the nutrients and moisture go from the compost bin right back into the planting area, you know, and it can be at the height that's comfortable for the gardener. And um, if you want to sit on a chair, 
you can um, do that in this little nook. So it's a very handy little garden design that can do honestly whatever the gardener's choice is. But um, because of the large volume, you can grow a lot of food in this small space. These are heirloom tomatoes that were grown in, um, in the Roosevelt time when, when um, they were in the White House. And these um, tomatoes are all trellised and they're trained to two stem culture. So these are just regular tomatoes, but by training them, by cutting off the suckers that are in here and stripping off the leaves, they just want to keep growing. So we put them up high on trellis, and then when the, the plant gets all the way to the top, we can just lower and we lower it down. So if you follow this surveyor's tape, you can see how long that stem is already. So by, oh, by the end of the month, these plants will probably be about 25 feet long. The stem will be really long. And the advantage of trellising tomatoes is they're up off the ground. Um, they're, they get air moving through them. So there's less mildew, less mold problems. And they're so much easier to harvest when you're not, you know, bending down over the ground looking for the tomatoes in a jungle of, of tomato leaves. Right, and we're visiting now some of the trellises and some of the arches. Um, this is the kids' veggie hut, and it's really filled out mostly with a birdhouse gourd, um, but also in here are a, um, a cherry tomato, um, a yellow and a purple um, shell bean, and we have um, a Dakota black popcorn growing on it too. All of these trellises are just built with inexpensive concrete reinforcing wire. And then I just added some, some sticks, green sticks, and you just weave them into the framework. So you can create a nice archway, nice and aesthetically, without it being much money, also much. Um, and on the side, um, these are the tomatillas that are in a crib because they tend to get blown down by wind and rain. So you give them a little support of being in a, in a crib. And more of the, the Purple Martin um, birdhouse gourds. And then all in here are all the containers that have grown up since you last um, saw the first video. All right, and we're revisiting the, the modified Dutch bucket system. Um, so we're in full harvest now, the eggplant, just one eggplant per container. This is a cabbage. This cabbage is probably about six pounds. So the size of the container doesn't diminish the size of the vegetables. They grow full-size vegetables. Um, these are a, a, a sweet pepper. Um, and these are a medium, hot, spicy pepper called a peach, peach pepper. And more eggplants. Um, and we do harvest twice a week so that um, we're con continually picking this. So these have been very productive this year. And again, the the, the beauty of the system is that the evenness of moisture, the plants just draw up from the rain gutter just the amount of moisture that they need. So they never get overwatered. And again, if it rains really heavy, the water just goes out through the bottom of the bucket. So um, we've had really good, good harvest out of this system this year. Okay. And if you meant to start your grocery bag garden but haven't gotten to it yet, it's not too late. We have been just cycling plants through our garden. This beautiful romaine lettuce is ready to pick. And when we take those out, we're just gonna start again with little lettuce seedlings that we started, a, what, Al, two weeks ago? Yeah, those um, started Or you can buy ago. in the garden center and sell packs. So um, these just keep cycling through and we harvest out and replant, harvest out and replant. And over the course of the summer, the grocery bag will wear out just start fresh again next year with a new bag. Uh, this is a demonstration of just some ways to protect your crops. A lot of people think, oh, I can't grow a garden. I have too many problems with, you know, neighborhood cats or woodchucks or deer or squirrels or chipmunks. So what I've shown here is just some ways that you can protect your crop. You don't have to fence your whole property. You just want to protect your crop. So this is a simple box in just with dimensional lumber. and. You know, this is to show basically how you could just make a small type of greenhouse to one so you could plant vegetables earlier in the year and then also plant them later so you don't have to worry about frost. And so it gives them protection and um, this is just simple materials. These, these are plumbing pipes um, that you can easily just bend and then I just put some screws in to hold them against the wood frame. 
Um, and then this is just, again, using plastic plumbing pipe and just putting a hoop over your crop and then putting um, bird netting, a smaller mesh than this, but just putting a netting over to keep out all the animals from eating. So even, it's not gonna keep deer out of your property, but it'll keep them from eating your crops. And it's easy to water, easy to take care of. So another area that we're really capitalizing on the vertical space is our lovely loofah wall. Uh, every morning this greets us with a beautiful mural of yellow flowers. Through the day they pop off and drift down like confetti. You can see them all over the ground here. And loofah is a really fun crop to grow. One, because you can do it on a trellis and keep it, you know, out of your space. And it's edible at the young stage where there's still some flexibility in the loofah squash and tender and a lot of, um, you know, Asian style cooking uh, is common with loofah. And then growing them on larger, you get to the point where it will make a beautiful back scratching loofah sponge. And at that point, we let them ripen entirely on the vine, cut them off, they dry, and then you just flake off the outside skin. And that entirety of the inside will be the fibers of your loofah sponge. I hope you enjoyed that tour with Al and Anna in the small space gardening exhibit. And hopefully you found some inspiration of things that you can do in your own small space home garden. We'll see you in another future week for another Fair and Friends Friday. Thanks so much for watching.